Hey guys, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. And real quick before we get started today, I just wanted to let everyone know at the end of this video, I'll be announcing the winners of the giveaway. I was going to do it yesterday, but then I had so many issues with this app and whatnot. And also, if you have received an email from me that your calendar had shipped, or even if you only, even if you hadn't bought one and had um, so generously given me a donation and still got one of those messages, please just disregard it. It's just PayPal. Uh, they're holding all those funds because I didn't send out tracking information, even though I tried to explain to them that some of them are just donations and whatnot. But again, thank you all for everything. And I just wanted to explain that. So today's case takes us to Joshua Tree National Park, which is in the United States in California. And this is a very sad case, unfortunately. This happened back in 2020. And today we're going to be discussing the tragic case of Erica Ashley Lloyd. And Erica was 37 years old at the time of her disappearance. She disappeared on June 16th of 2020, but she had been working and living in the Walnut Creek area of California. She owned a salon called Bloom and she specialized in styling hair, makeup, spray tanning for brides, and all kinds of things for wedding parties. She also worked with another business called Glam on the Go, but, and she was doing great. And unfortunately, due to all the mandates uh, of closures of salons and different you know, face-to-face -face businesses and all the social distancing requirements uh, that the government had impacted uh, due to the coronavirus, her business was one of those that was was struggling, unfortunately, because, you know, there was so, they, they first started out saying, OK, you can only do uh, things outdoors. And then it was the whole business was just eventually had to be shut down. So, you know, a lot of these small businesses were really struggling and hers was one of them. And so really, she was uh, staying at home. She was homeschooling her son. She was uh, making videos for her Instagram about hair and makeup and different salon things like that and you know she was just trying to to get by but obviously the the pressure was getting to her I mean it's that's COVID stuff was hard for a lot of us so I, I totally understand and she had gotten inspired uh, before when she had gone to Honolulu and she had decided that she wanted to unplug for a few days to use her words and she decided that she was going to go on a camping trip or this is what she told her family, at least, that she wanted to go to a, on a camping trip to Joshua Tree National Park. According to her family, it just she was doing fine. It's just that the pressure of the lockdown for being home for almost three months, not being able to work, you know, just homeschooling her son, you know, that just had to start not having any income just got to her. So she wanted to take this trip to sort of revamp herself and just get some uh, time away and so she dropped her son off at her ex's and this was on uh, June 14th uh, she told her family that she was setting out for this 500 mile trip roughly a seven hour drive from her home in Walnut Creek heading down to Joshua Tree National Park now at the time at this time of the year in Joshua Tree Na National Park it is really hot I mean temperatures can get past 100 degrees so just something to, to bear in mind uh, when we get further into this case. Now, the last time her family spoke to her was on June 16th. Uh, they spoke on the phone. She spoke on the phone with her mother. And according to her mom, she sounded fine. It sounded like she was driving. She couldn't really hear everything that she was saying. So it was a little little choppy, but she, she sounded okay. You know, she didn't sound upset or anything like that. Sadly, the same day was when her crashed Honda Accord was found on a desert road by the police on the intersection of Highway 62 and, Sh and Shelton Road in the 29 Palms area. Erica was nowhere around, and a search of the area was bizarre because there was no evidence of a car crash. There was no glass or broken pieces of plastic or anything like that you normally see from a car crash on the ground. However, the car was really smashed up and I'm going to have some pictures here that you can see what the car looked like. There are some conflicting reports and what I mean by that, there was another report that said park rangers had initially found Erica's car vandalized on Monday June 15th at the Indian Cove campground in Joshua Tree National Park. Now, as you can see by these pictures, the windows and the windshield are completely smashed. 
the dashboard inside has damage and the the radio is all busted up according to this report the rangers left a note on the car noting the damage and then they checked back later that evening and the car was gone now this report is up for speculation that we know for sure that her car was found by the police abandoned on the side of the road on 62 i just thought i'd mention it for people that are really followed this case her camping gear and all that stuff was subsequently found in the Jumbo Rocks campground of Joshua Tree National Park. And this is a very popular campground area. It's got, you know, beautiful views of the stars and stuff at night. The police were originally confused because when they searched her car, they didn't find any camp gear inside the vehicle. They found a stroller in the back trunk. However, there was nothing else as far as gear and the car when it was found by California Highway Patrol. Now, the owner of Bailey's Auto Repair and Towing, which is the company that had towed the vehicle back after they had found it, they reported, and I quote, it was more than just vandalized. The car had smashed windows, a shattered radio, the airbag had been deployed. It was just a complete wreck. The radiator was ex smashed backwards. The whole bottom of the radio AC condenser was pushed back in almost like they thought that she had hit a very large object. When they found the car abandoned, it was pointed south in the southward direction. Now on June 17th of 2020 is when her family reported her missing. And of course, a search got started right away, even though the search had already gotten started the previous day when they had found the car. And like I said, they found her gear and some of her belongings at the Jumbo Rocks campground in Joshua Tree, which is about 10 miles from where the car was found. This is where speculation started coming in. I mean, people weren't sure whether she had gotten in an accident inside the park area and then she drove out of the park, you know, and got as far as that she could before the car just stopped working. Uh, it's definitely believed that she was hit in the face by the airbag if she had been, in fact, driving the car. It's possible that she drove it to where the car was found abandoned and she got out and was trying to seek help. But for the most part, everyone was working under the assumption that she had suffered some sort of injury and just wandered away, possibly had some memory loss or maybe complete mental amnesia. It's hard to say. The San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department did say at the time they did not suspect foul play regarding all the evidence that they had found with the vehicle and the remains of the gear at the campground. Erica's family eventually hired Doug Billings, who is a cave and mine expert, to help look for Erica, and he, he has found other people in the past, and he did report to various news stations that he found one particular witness that said he saw, they saw someone with Erica's description walking down Route 62 with another person roughly a week after she went missing. Then in October of 2020, Mr. Billings, he found two various sets of remains and a cell phone, which he thought was probably one to be Erica, however they weren't. One of the sets was found about a quarter mile south of Amboy Road and Wilson Road, and the other set was discovered near Shelton Road and Highway 62, right in the area where Erica's vehicle was found. So that he obviously thought they were hers, but actually the cell phone belonged to a man, James Escalante, who had vanished in the same area in June of 2020, but for whatever reason wasn't reported missing until September 7th. And then on December 15th of 2020, they, uh, the coroner's, the medical examiner's uh, office notified his family that, the, that they had found the remains and they were able to put him to rest. It wasn't until January 31st of 2021 that hikers hiking along that area discovered human remains on the desert trail Wonder Valley, which is about 15 miles northeast of Joshua Tree National Park. And the remains were located near Danby Road and Anby Road in the Wonder Valley, which was roughly four miles away from where Erica's car was found. And these were Erica's remains. And they were on nearby private property around half a mile away from the Wonder Valley Hot Springs. The medical examiner's office used her dental records to determine that the remains did in fact belong to Erica Lloyd. However, the cause or manner of death still remains undetermined. So what actually happened to Erica? 
I mean, it's plausible that she probably had an accident. Maybe she hit something, maybe she ran into a ditch. Perhaps when she hit her head or the airbag hit her, she walked out of the car uh, confused maybe with a concussion and she was looking for any signs of life and walked towards the hot springs buildings but just couldn't make it and passed away due to heat exhaustion. According to people that live in the area, the roads are very open and there's not a lot of boulders and things that she possibly could have hit, you know, not a lot of obstacles. So, and apparently there's not that many ditches either. So really it's hard to say, but new information came to light after her remains had been discovered and after all of this had been thought out. After her remains were discovered, detectives kept working the case and they were able to determine that her vehicle was taken from the original location where she went missing, which of course threw off the search and rescue operations. So it was actually in the original spot in that campground. Now the detectives had been working to obtain warrants to identify these subjects and then on June 8th of 2021, they did identify who stole the vehicle. They were arrested to these subjects. They were residents of 29 Palms. One subject was identified as a 34 year old woman who faced charges of grand theft auto and possession of stolen property. Now another subject was identified as a 28 year old man who faced vehicle theft and felony possession of a firearm. And of course this was all uh, in process but i don't believe any of these have gone to court yet i know the wheels of justice move slowly but unfortunately you know this still hampers what actually happened to her because these people stole the vehicle out of the campground and then abandoned it on the road where detectives later found it but who knows if they were involved in her disappearance uh, that investigation is still ongoing so those are the facts of the case. What actually happened to Erica, we still don't know. Could it have been just an accident? Possibly. Could it have been foul play? Possibly too. I mean, why was her car stolen out of this campground and then abandoned on the road? Could that have just been a total coincidence? Why was it in this other campground to begin with? There's also been reports that Erica was supposed to meet a few guys in Joshua Tree National Park. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but if they were, if it was true, who, who were they and were they possibly involved? And the fact that there were several other sets of remains found in and around the same area that Eric Cook's car was found, it seems kind of bizarre. I mean, it could just be a total coincidence or it could be that there's just some crazy madman in the area. I mean, it's it's just hard to say, but I wanted to cover this case because I just felt like so many things didn't add up and there's just so many bizarre things that pieces of evidence that we do have but then also all these strange facts too so what actually happened to erica lloyd was it just a simple accident had she gotten in an accident in the campground and then those people just happened to steal her car or was it something more nefarious i just really want this family to get the answers that they deserve and I'm sure you know her son is going to always want to know the answers and what happened to his mom. This area is very very hot in the summer and it is known for people getting lost and dehydrating even people that are familiar with the park because the temperatures and weather can just get so oppressive and a lot of people that go there to hike or camp they'll if they're going on a longer hike they'll actually pre-stash water ahead because it can just be a very, very oppressive place and it takes a, a lot of planning in some cases. So who knows, it could have just been a tragic accident, but I just feel like all the evidence that we have and all the, the fact that you know this woman loved her family and she had a, a business that she was working to keep alive and she had a son that she loved greatly. And I just think she would have fought like crazy to stay alive and get out of there. So who knows, maybe it was just a combination of events. Maybe she did get in the accident and then ended up just running into the wrong people. I don't know, but either way, I just hope that her family can one day get the answers and they can get the closure that they deserve and need. And my thoughts and prayers go out to them, all her friends and family, and of course her son and everyone that knew her. They erected this monument out in the desert where her remains were found. And I would like to dedicate this video to Erica Ashley Lloyd, who was just way too young to be taken from this earth and left her son and all her loved family members behind, all of her business friends and 
family that loved her so much and just hoping that you can all find the closure and peace that you deserve and need. Alright everyone, that's the end of today's video. I ask you to please be respectful in the comments if you choose to leave them. Remember this is somebody's daughter, this is somebody's mother, family, and friend member. So please, please be respectful and think of it before you leave a comment. Thank you everybody for watching, as always. Special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music. And I will see everybody in the next one. Take care. Hey guys, thanks for sticking with me till the end as always. So I have the winners of the giveaway. The first is Michelle Givart, G-E-V-A-E-R-T. Second is Donald Brandit, B-R-A-N-D-I-T. And then I do have a bonus winner and that is Rachel Kelly and Iceberg Arc Aaron. If you heard your name in there, just please send me an email with your address. The first two, Michelle and Donald, will be receiving the fanny pack, and then Rachel and Iceberg Arc, the runner-up winners, will be receiving another piece of gear that I will send you, so just get me your addresses. Please, you can email me, and uh, that email will be in the description of this video, and of course, it's always in the About section, and you can always email at me at any time. But anyway, send me your emails, please, or your addresses, please, and I'll get those out to you. Alright guys, so today's bucket list item, the first one is the Grand Canyon. I've always wanted to go there and hike it and see all the areas around that. And no, I've never really been there. I've flown over and been to the surrounding area, but never actually the Grand Canyon. And then this next place, I believe, is in the Philippines. I had all the information for it, but it's literally these huts that are built into the jungle and it just looks absolutely beautiful if anyone knows for sure definitely let me know this last place is right here in washington dc it's on top of the famous watergate building and it's literally these igloos where you can go and reserve and have dinner in them and it's they're done around the holiday time and they're just these private igloos and they just look beautiful. I mean, it's crazy expensive, so who knows if I'd ever be able to afford it, but, and it's always booked up too, but it just looks so beautiful. And it's right next door to the Kennedy Center, so. Can you imagine what an awesome first date that would be? A show at the Kennedy Center and then this awesome private igloo dinner on top of the Watergate Hotel. I mean, on during the holidays.